Good morning. Good the, morning. Sep the September 4th, 2018 meeting of Douglas County Board of Commissioners will uh, come to order and we're pleased this morning to have our chief tax appraiser, Benny Waldrop, here with us this morning. After the invocation, I will ask that we please remain standing for our pledge to the flag. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Father, we come with grateful hearts. Your blessings shower down upon us day by day. We thank you for our homes, our families, our country, our state, our community, our churches, good friends, our jobs, being with us in the difficult times of life, calling us to the great work of love and helping each other, all the other blessings of life. We're just so thankful today that we come with grateful hearts. We're grateful to have another meeting of the Board of Commissioners as our local governments in action. We're thankful for those who come to serve as commissioners, those who come to serve as our chair, our county department heads and all of our employees and our citizens. We're thankful, dear Lord, for this wonderful place we live. Now, dear Lord, we ask you to guide our board of commissioners as they have these important <coughs> deliberations. Help them with each decision they make be led by your sweet spirit. Help us to remember, dear Lord, with all of the worries of life, that you know our needs and you're there to help us. And all we need to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning again, and thank you so much, uh, Chief Appraiser uh, Benny Waldrop, for leading us in our invocation this morning. And we're delighted that you all have joined us, and we appreciate your participation in local government. Uh, we don't have anyone signed up this morning, I believe, Clerk, uh, no, to speak. Thank you. So we'll move on to the approval of our minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the minutes, and I've asked you to take the time to look at them. Uh, you have the minutes of the commission meeting of August 21st, 2018, the work session minutes um, of August 20th, 2018, and the executive session minutes of August 20th, 2018. Are there any corrections, addi additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. No, ma Being none, the minutes stand as approved. Next, we have our business item, business item tab number four, our authorization to approve a contract with the collaborative firm in the amount not to exceed $50,000 for phase two branding and public outreach efforts for Connect Douglas for the remainder of 2018 as recommended by the Transportation Committee. For the commissioners, uh, I've read this business item. Any questions or before I call for a motion? Any questions or comments, Commissioner Guider? Uh, yes, ma'am. I had asked that this be broken out of the consent agenda. Uh, when we went through phase one, <clears throat> I do not remember it saying phase one. Uh, now, I could be wrong. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but it was for 50000 and here we are doing another 50000 for the same uh, firm without going through the bid process. And I, if it's under 50000 I know we don't have to have the bid process, but in one year, it it might be perceived by the public as uh, circumventing the um, bid process. So um, I did ask if there was going to be a phase three, because this only goes through the end of 2018. And the answer was possibly. So there again, we may have 150000 for the same contractor. <laughs> Um, just think that this could be perceived by the public as bid, uh, circumventing the bid process. And I yield back. Okay. Do you have questions or comments before I move forward? Okay. Madam well, Chair, let me, may I? Yes. Um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, it, 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 it begins to point, um, when we started this whole project, 
one of the challenges that we recognize as an administration that we lack certain skill sets. It is what it is. And what we have to do is that you hire to your deficiency. You bring in advisors, you bring in the consultants, and you, you do those things as staff augmentation. They flex up, flex down based on the need. Uh, we recognize that we, and we realize that, and we talked about it in our work session last week, before we went on holiday, was the need that we, um, we could have improved, and we had a, an opportunity to improve our communication capacity. If you think about transparency as a strategic priority, it was one of those where we were tested, and we realized, okay, we, we gotta enhance, especially certain projects, we gotta enhance our capacity. Now again, the public has to meet us there, but nonetheless, we have to do a better job of communicating and engaging the public. And we went through this process, and we learned a lot during this uh, initial outing. But first things first, we didn't even know if we were gonna pass this. So you can't, you can't get ahead of yourself, mm -hmm. right? So what we did in this particular project is that we just, let's get through the public engagement that was associated with getting this project um, to a place where we could actually vote on it. Not or beyond that, now we have to take that same process and ensure the public remains engaged as we get through the, the bus stops and everything else and perfecting the routes as it relates to public hearings. And that was important. So we had to engage the same people. We just extended the agreement, that's what this is, to continue the work. They did a great job and we're trying to compartmentalize this, keep it real tight, keep it real simple. We're not committing to a year, two year contract. That was the whole point. It's like, well, steady. Let's take this in bite-sized hits. Let's not do too much at once. We do finally recognize, and we talked about this, is that there could be, um, it could extend beyond this. And the reason we brought that up and we talked about it in our, our work session, or our, especially in our, our, um, our committee, was that we recognized that, okay, through the end of the year, we're communicating. And I brought this up, it's like, well, wait a minute. We won't be implemented until, what, the end of, third, end of first quarter? So, but, but again, first thing, what's in the budget today that you can afford? That's what we worked on. And then we'll deal with next year, next year. But so that's the way this broke out. So I, I appreciate Madam Guider's point because it needs to be brought clarity to it. You're only using current months, current budget process and money associated with that in order to do this particular engagement. So Madam Chair, I just wanted to clarify what that was all about. Um, no, it, there's not a, a, a hoodwink or anything like that associated with this. It's it simply staff brought this forward. Um, and so we, we recognize that. So I'm gonna yield on that, that time clock. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we'd just like to just make it known to the public that our uh, voting system, our electronic voting system, uh, we're experiencing technical difficulty this morning. So we will uh, revert uh, back to our uh, manual process. Um, with that being said, uh, thank you, Vice Chairman, for your comment, and also thank you, Commissioner Guider. Um, do we have a motion uh, to authorize and approve a contract with a collaborative firm in the amount not to exceed $50,000 for, for phase two branding. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion before I move forward? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, Opposed. Opposed, okay, we have, okay, thank you. We have four to one. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next, we move to the consent agenda. Uh, tab number five, authorization to issue an invitation to bid for the construction of restroom concession facilities at Bill Arc and Fair Play Parks to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST, fund, SPLOST funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Tab number six, authorization to sign a memorandum of understanding between Goodwill of North Georgia and the Douglas County Public Libraries for the purpose of supporting the efforts of Goodwill of North Georgia Career Connector and Career Services and enhancing the Douglas County Library System outreach goals for patron services and job search support. Tab number seven, authorization to approve the basic graphic design and color palette for Connect Douglas as recommended by the Transportation Committee. Tab number eight, authorization to approve an agreement with Energy Solutions Southeast LLC for the E911 generator maintenance in the amount of $975 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number nine, authorization to purchase protective turnout gear from Bennett Fire Protection piggybacking off the city of Atlanta bid for the amount of $2,100 per set up to and including 100 sets, 170 sets 
utilizing reimbursement SPLOST funds from the cities upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee. Tab number 10, authorization to purchase 16 automatic vehicle locators, equipment from Island Technology Services in the amount of $30,096. Uh, utilizing reimbursement funds, uh, SPLOS funds from the cities upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS uh, Committee. Tab number 11, authorization to award a bid to William Scotsman's in the amount of $32,045. From the rental of temporary housing during renovations to fire station number three, Kil located on Kilroy Lane, funded by the 2016 SPLOS dollars upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12, authorization to accept change order number two in the amount of $80,000. $80, $80,637, $80,637, excuse me, as submitted by Motorola Solutions for the 800 megahertz radio SPLOST project upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee and with the approval of TUSA Consultant and uh, Bill Peacock Purchasing Director. Tab number 13, authorization to award a bid to 10A fire and safety equipment for the purchase of a new pumper truck for the Douglas County Fire Department for the total amount of $451,699 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And finally, tab number 14, authorization to enter into contract negotiations with Headley Construction Corporation for the Douglas County Ride Share Facility construction and renovation for a cost not to exceed $1 $685,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So, so moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes, Mr. Geyer. Okay. You, you were behind him. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on any particular <coughs> items before I call for a motion? Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Mole here. Uh, a brief remark and then a, a follow-up question. Uh, firstly, item nine. Uh, this was really a great opportunity and it's things this commission has talked about from time to time going back to, to uh, bulk purchasing. So I want to extend, I th probably on behalf of the entire commission, uh, thanks to uh, the city of Atlanta for allowing us to join in with their purchase. Uh, this bulk purchase of this uh, turnout gear uh, probably saved us anywhere from eight, nine hundred dollars per unit. So this is a considerable savings being able to uh, work with the city of Atlanta on purchasing these uh, uh, improved turnout gear for our fire and EMS uh, folks. Uh, item 12, uh, I would like uh, our purchasing director to kind of give some context, uh, Mr. Bill Peacock, the context of this uh, uh, change order. And we frequently think of change order, well, the price is going up. Uh, in this case, that's somewhat accurate, but there's some background to it as well. So, Mr. Peacock, if you would explain uh, the whole uh, the uh, change request, starting with the first one and now the second one. I will uh, do my best. I also have asked the, um, the fire chief to come up because he's got probably better documentation with him than I do. Keep it, sim uh, keep it simple for me. <laughs> change order one uh, had a couple of components. Uh, the, the summary of those components was that we received um, money back, uh, or savings, from change order one, about $185,000. Uh, so we have that change order approved. Uh, the second change order, um, there were additional uh, work items that were needed to be done uh, by our vendor. Uh, we had to remove a tower over in Fulton County um, in, uh, in replacement for us being able to actually use the uh, other tower there to put our uh, radio equipment on. Uh, we have the expense of... Uh, we have the uh, sprinkler system at the SO. Sprinkler system at the SO, and there's one other. Uh, and for uh, travel fees. The travel fees for the uh, monies that we had to pay for the travel fees for the lands for one of the towers. Okay, so just kind of, kind of recap then, the, the initial change order was to our benefit. $185,000. And then the second order is for un unforeseen expenses coming out of that credit, if That's you true. will. For about $85,000. Uh, 
which leaves us in savings of $104,000. That, that's four. That, that's all I need to okay. need to hear from you. Thank you, both of you, for coming up. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions? Commissioner Guider? Yes, and, and, and I'm going to keep you up here, Chief, please. Uh, number 10, uh, the purchase of uh, the automatic vehicle locator. Please explain to the public what that is. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have these on our ambulances currently, and, and what this does is it sends a signal back to 911 so that they can actually track our units mm -hmm. so that if there was uh, an emergency at the courthouse. Uh, right now, I have no idea where all my equipment is, but with these automatic vehicle locators, 911 would know where everything was at, so they would always dispatch the closest unit, uh, regardless of it may be rescue four from fair play, because may be up here at the hospital. The closer ones could be on another call. Exactly. Is what you're saying. But this allows 911 to track <coughs> our units and always dispatch the closest available. All right, and then on number 11, um, the uh, this is the uh, Kilroy. Lane uh, Fire yes, Station right there. Yes, ma'am. And we're going to we're, we're gonna renovate most, a lot of it, aren't we? Uh, we're we're going to rip out everything that's inside uh -huh. uh, and uh, renovate that. And we're going to add about a 12-foot extension on to the, that would be the north side, I guess, uh, of the station. Mm -hmm. uh, so this temporary housing uh, will be where our firefighters and EMTs stay until their new station is complete. The renovation. The I renovation. wanted to bring that out because we, we're not because of the renovation. We're not going to close the station. So no, ma'am. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that's that's one of the components of the contract with the uh, uh, with our contractor is they have to make sure that our engine bays stay in service the entire time. Mm -hmm. uh, and by using this temporary housing, we got a place <coughs> that our guys can uh, sleep, eat, you know, take showers and all that. All right. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. I yield okay. back. All right. Any other discussion from the board before I call for? <laughs> Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner. I just want to make a comment and just to establish for the official record, um, during our last work session regarding this very topic that my other two colleagues talked about, um, specifically this one dealing with um, savings. Um, uh, regarding the SPLOS, uh, from time to time, through staff efforts, through negotiations, through um, bids uh, coming in, whatever the case may be, there may be a realized savings. And the question is always um, before us on what do we do with the savings? Uh, do we reapply that savings directly back into uh, additional projects that may be on the list above the line or below the line? Or do we whatever? Um, and a unique case in point is something that I've um, always been um, sensitive to is that in the current SPOS that was passed by the citizens in 2016, we had a certain category that was fire EMS and we had, um, quote, um, a, a tower for the sake of, um, you know, uh, for the sake of the conversation. It didn't specifically say public safety. Um, and, and therein lies my question, and I brought up in the work session, and I'm just going to use this for the record that I, I, I asked our legal to look at to look into if in fact we got savings on this tower, uh, can it be utilized for other areas within public safety that may be related or not? It was a financial question, not to add stuff to the project list, but it was a savings. And so, just like we're, we add to the list on things that weren't part of the spots, but they fell in the category, um, I, I wanted to see if there was some type of consistency. So for the record, Madam Chair, I just want to put it that we did ask um, legal to look into this, and I don't expect an answer in this form. I just want to put a record. I yield. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. We have a motion and a second uh, for the consent agenda. All in favor of, the, um, of this consent agenda be, being approved, please say aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. All opposed, the same, and this motion carries. Thank you, so five to one. Uh, next, we have five. announcements. I would, you have something, Commissioner? Five, did it pass? Yeah, five, five oh. Five. Did I say five to one? Yeah. Five, five, five oh. Yeah. I'm still in Memphis, y'all. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, announcements, uh, would, I would like to, our, our communications director, Rick Martin, to come forward, please. Thank Good you. morning. Good, Good morning, night. Madam Chair. Good morning. Board of Commissioners, staff. A few announcements we have. Uh, there will be a two public input meeting regarding the Senior Center being built in uh, Lithia Springs.
by SPLOS funds. The first meeting will be this week at Cornerstone Baptist Church on South Sweetwater Road. That's Thursday, September 6th from 4 p.m. to 6. Uh, Carter Watkins, Associates Architects Incorporated will be there in the meeting taking input uh, from the citizens of Douglas County on what they'd like for the Senior Center. Uh, the second meeting will occur on October 4th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at First Baptist Church Lithia Springs on Veterans Memorial Highway. For more information, uh, David Good could be contacted at 2016splost at gmail.com. Join Keep Douglas County Beautiful, the Douglasville, Douglas County Water Sewer Authority, Advancing Modern Professionals in Douglas County and the Douglas County Master Gardeners for the Rivers Alive Cleanup and Maintenance Day at the Douglas County Courthouse Nature Trail on Saturday, September 8th. This event's happening from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. All ages and skill levels are welcome to participate. To volunteer or receive more information, uh, you can email uh, or call, I should say, 770-920-7593 or email Tabria Cobb at countyco.douglas.ga.us. Uh, that information will be on the website, celebratedouglascounty.com. You're also invited to join the Douglas County Board of Commissioners for the 2018 Patriots Day Ceremony on September 11th, right here in Citizens Hall at 9 o'clock. Uh, Douglas County will be observing this National Day of Service and Remembrance as to show our appreciation for our first responders, veterans, and active military personnel. The ceremony will take place, like I said, here in Citizens Hall. For more information, the public's invited to call 770-920-7436. And last but not least, the Douglas County Department of External Affairs is now accepting applications from Douglas County High School sophomores and juniors for the Douglas County Youth Commission. The program in partnership with the Georgia Civic Awareness Program for students and is dedicated to educating young citizens about the importance of being actively conscious of their local government environment and the opportunities that are available in the public sector. The program will run from September through April and will meet once a month on Tuesdays from 4.30 to 6.30. All applications will be due September 7th. For more information, you're invited to call 770-920-7593. And last but not least, what's not on the list is September Saturdays, the largest festival here in Douglas County. It's happening September 22nd and September 29th, free for the public. All invited to attend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Communications Director Rick Martin. Um, any other Announcements from our Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Robinson. One, Madam Chair, and it's, I'm going to need the help of, of Gary Dukes, the Director of, of, of Parks and Rec, and when is the input meeting for uh, the um, multi purpose center? I thought we established it, but I wanted to, if we were going to do it soon of record, I wanted to make sure we put that of record since it wasn't the announcement, unless something changed. Thank you, Director Good Thank Dukes. You. He's coming forward. Right. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, Commissioners. Uh, the uh, input meeting for the Multipurpose Recreation Center will be held on September the 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the uh, Boundary Waters Aquatic Center. Thank you. And the architect will be on site to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You, Thank you so much for that announcement. If there are no further comments, um, this meeting is satisfied. So this meeting is adjourned. Recess. Recess. Recess.